I'm Alice Fern and I play Captain Beverly Bass in the award-winning musical Come From Away. It is in these times of great tragedy, uncertainty and reflection such as we are experiencing now that small acts of kindness from those around us are most cherished. In the days following 9-11, when many aeroplanes from all over the world were diverted to a small Newfoundland town, the communities there showed such generosity of spirit by welcoming strangers into their hearts and their homes. Their story portrayed in Come From Away is hugely uplifting and one of hope, love and togetherness. Over the next 15 minutes, we'll hear from some of those people. We'll perform from the show. We will give thanks to those who have supported and inspired us. And we will answer your questions. I hope you enjoy. Well, on September 11th it was just like any other ordinary day in Gander. I was at Tim Martin's coffee shop, uh, where I go almost every morning. And when someone came in and said that a plane had crashed into the World Trade Center in New York. But it was only about probably 15, 20 minutes after when someone else said the, the second plane had crashed. And, you know, bills start to go off in your head that this is not normal. All of a sudden, our plane took a steep drop and we started turning to the north. I looked up at the GPS and it looked like we were headed to the North Pole. The captain said there was a problem with the American airspace that was closed and we were diverting to Newfoundland. And I had to look up on my uh, little map thing like, where's Newfoundland? Oh, okay. Yeah. So we ended up with 38 aircraft and we ended up with uh, a little over 7,000 passengers for five days. A lot were from the United States. There was Germany and there was France and there was England and there was Dublin, uh, Ireland. We covered uh, 98 countries. The first task we were given was to move furniture and make room on the floor for people to sleep. And we did that in two schools. And by the time we arrived back at Gander Academy, where I taught, there were 100 volunteers in the building. There was bedding, there was food. That's the way uh, people in Newfoundland were raised. You, you help each other. We deplaned and walked into the Gander Airport. Immediately, the first thing that happened, we were greeted with food and smiles. Just the whole community mobilized instantly. My husband used to have a saying, you never miss what you give away. And that's so true. There was a little bit of anxiety. It was a different age in 2001, where a gay couple in a foreign country in a small town, but they are a very welcoming community. And as the mayor says, people need help, you help them. It doesn't matter who you are, your religion, your sexual orientation. And isn't that how the world ought to operate? On the first day, we had 7,000 strangers. On the third day, we had 7,000 friends. And on the fifth day, 7,000 family members. And we travel all, all the time. And it's clear that if you grow up and you live and you stay in your little community and you never branch out of it, you don't get to experience other cultures. It gives us an opportunity to learn about other people and realize that we're all a human at the end of the day. To me, that is what Come From Away reminds us to do is look up and gander, look up at the people around you and talk to them, say hello, you know, a smile, a simple gesture, a small act of kindness, a pay it forward, uh, can, is really what's gonna fix our broken world. It's a long journey, but I think we can get there, and I think this musical is changing people's lives throughout the world, there's no question about it. Hi, I'm Alice Fern, I'm playing Beverly Bass. Beverly Bass is a pioneer in flight. She is the first American female captain to fly and Beverly lands in Gander. We learned that New York's airspace would be closed. Right after that, they then shut down all of the U.S. airspace. So we started planning for a divert. We knew that we were going to divert to the place in Gander. We actually landed about 10 or 10.30, I think, Tuesday morning. And when they came on the airplane, they said, you will not be getting off until tomorrow. And the only thing we could do is listen to the BBC 
in the cockpit. That was the only radio that we had. So, so we were actually getting London's version of what had to happen in the U.S. Well, we got off the plane and the first thing we did is um, get registered by the Red Cross. But on the way into the terminal, they had set up tables and tables and tables because the people of Gander, I guess, had cooked all night long. I mean, there was food for everybody. I knew immediately that the people were like the nicest people I have ever been around in my life. I mean, it didn't matter what you needed or what you wanted, it was there. The reason why her story is in this particular show is it's really interesting to see that perspective, to see from a pilot's perspective of that five days when they were there, what did they go through? Suddenly I've got to kind of The challenge for bringing Beverly to life in the show would be finding that slightly more reserved, a little bit older, very centred, um, someone who really knows her job inside out. You know, she's very, very strong throughout the whole show. The only time you ever see her humanise, I suppose, in a way, is when she speaks to her husband. So it's wonderful to see the two aspects of her life, how strong she can be and how much she's there for her passengers, and how loving and how much she desperately wants to get home to her family too. David and I Irene wrote a beautiful song called Me in the Sky. And really, you get to sit down with Beverly like friends in an audience, and you get to hear her story. The first female American captain in history. Me in the Sky is, um, is just so pivotal in learning everything you need to know about Beverly. Where she came from, what she loves. You can see, just through the song, how much she adores flying, how much she adores planes. It's her absolute life force. She's a generous human being. I just am so delighted that I get to explore her. Audiences, I think, when they come and see it, will just be reminded of the brilliance of humanity at its best. Beverly Bass always talks about how loving, kind and welcoming the people of Newfoundland were in the days following 9-11. So, we thought Me in the Sky was the perfect song to perform to say thanks to them and thanks to some of our own inspirations and heroes. My parents must have thought They had a crazy kid Cause I was one of those kids Who always knew what I wanted They took me down to the airport To see all the planes depart And watching them fly Something inside of me was starting I was eight when I told them That I'd be a pilot but I was too young and too short And there were no female captains And my dad said, be patient He said, just see what happens But I took my first lesson Came down from the sky And told my father I'd fly for the rest of my life And I got my first job Flying for a mortician In a tiny bonanza Just a corpse and me Five dollars an hour For flying dead bodies I had to climb over their faces Just to get to my seat And 
the girls all thought much higher of me. 1986, the first female American captain in history. Suddenly I'm in the cockpit. Suddenly I've got my wings. Suddenly all of those pilots are testing me. Well, they can get their own drinks. <laughs> We love getting questions from fans after the show. Because we can't do that right now, we have asked you to send in your questions. And here are some familiar faces to answer them for you. Oh, well, he's definitely taught me a lot about patience. Patience of working with chairs. Chairs that need to be on very specific points on a stage, not over here or over here. It's got to be exactly here and within an inch. It's also taught me about kindness and that kindness is everywhere and knows no bounds. What I feel that I've learned from the show is that a smile to a stranger or helping someone with their groceries or putting others first are all random acts of kindness that we can do um, in our daily lives and hopefully make a huge impact. I think Come From Away has reminded me that we are all connected and that we need to take care of each other. And even just the tiniest act of kindness, just making somebody a cup of tea or a tray of sandwiches or even just sitting and listening to somebody else's story can connect you to them and bring kindness to them in a way that can transform their life. My favorite part of the show is screeched in, especially as Claude, uh, because everyone on stage gets to have so much fun and so does the audience. And it's actually a lot like a real screeching in ceremony, except unfortunately, the fish on stage is not real. My favorite part of the show is towards the end of the musical in a musical number somewhere in the middle of nowhere. The revolve starts to go round and you see the entire length of the plane where all of the passengers' eyes just lift up to the sky. I think for me it would have to be in the number Somewhere in the Middle of Nowhere where we're all sat in the plane and suddenly the dynamic and the music changes and the revolve starts and it brings the plane round to face the audience. Uh, there's a real moment of stillness in the company there and it's just, it's filled with hope and optimism. My favourite part of the show is towards the end. And it's when all of the come from aways have gotten on the planes and left. And the Newfoundlanders are all left on stage. And there's a line that Bonnie sings, which is, as they boarded, it started to rain. And everybody looks up and there's this beautiful lighting change. And it's the first time that they get to reflect on what's happened and what they've been part of and it's a real moment of of stillness and, and it's really magical 
I think, personally for me, my favorite part of the show is the opening. Um, nothing beats that feeling of being on the side of the stage um, with your mates, ready to go on stage to tell this incredible story. For me, that has to be the final plane, which is the plane where we all fly home. Um, it's where we sing the song somewhere. I love that song, I love all the harmonies and all the kind of big group sound. And it's just a really joyful, wonderful moment in the show. That's my favorite bit every time. The prayer section has most definitely been the most poignant moment of the show for me. Um, Make Me A Channel Of Your Peace is such a beautiful, beautiful hymn and uh, it holds quite a lot of personal significance for me. I grew up with that hymn. Um, and I just think that that moment in the show really reflects what our story is about. And it's about humanity coming together in a moment and just taking care of one another. I think it has to be when all the female cast members join Beverly Bass in singing Me in the Sky. When the character of Garth works out a way of being able to communicate with a group of non-English speaking come from away as via the use of his Bible. And the reason why I love this moment so much is because I think it's the essence of the show. It doesn't matter where we are, who we are, where we've come from, with a bit of imagination, trial and error and patience, we can all find a level playing field and we can all learn to speak the same language. I spoke to a lady called Beulah Cooper who became good friends with Hannah O'Rourke during this experience, my character, and uh, she told me out of 7,000 people, Hannah was the only person with somebody missing in the World Trade Center and that she sat by her phone night and day awaiting news of her son. I had the most wonderful conversation, two hour conversation over coffee with Oz Fudge, who I play on the show, and also his daughter, Lisa Fudge, and son, Jamie Fudge. And we sat and we told lots of stories. And uh, like when you talk to anyone who was involved in the events that came after 9-11, um, they're very quick to impress that nothing that they did was for any sense of trying to get praise or trying to get recognition. It was just what needed to happen for the people who arrived in Gander, um, just to help them stay alive and also to thrive. There was music and there was entertainment and they were telling me about um, kitchen parties where people would knock on the door in costume and they'd come in and they play music and they, they sing songs and tell stories and it's how lots of folk stories in Newfoundland are passed and kept alive. I have been very lucky that I've met a lot of people that were involved in the real life um, story that we tell. Um, I have met Beulah Cooper, I've met Diane Davis. These are the two ladies that Beulah Davis's name is from. Obviously, we take their stories and stories of all the ladies that were involved, all the people that were involved in helping. But there was a story that Diane Davis told me that really did stick with me. She said that when the plane people arrived, a lot of them had no idea what had happened. And they had set up these two televisions in the canteen and, and you know the plane people went in there and she said when they saw it, they either saw it once, left the room and never went back in again, or that they would sleep in that room because they had to be near a source of information. But the part that really stuck with me, that when she was telling me this, she said every time somebody saw it for the first time, she saw it for the first time. For me, there's three answers to this question. Uh, the acting is very natural, very real. The music isn't your typical musical theatre show, showy. It's quite, uh, it's quite real to the people of of Newfoundland. They'd be very musical. They would always have, you know, parties where they would have the, their borons out and their fiddles out. So it's an extension of who they are, and also that it is a real life story. It's something that touches us all in different ways, because it's about humanity, and we all you know, we all have our own reaction to that. So come from away, whether you want to call it a musical or a play, it's its own thing. I think it's a show that shows the human race in the most perfect way. And I think when you watch it, you see people giving their time, giving their love to strangers in a tremendously difficult situation. And I think that we all hope that we would be the same. You know what? The Newfoundland accent is probably one of the hardest accents I will ever have to learn because it is so difficult when you've got about three different accents merged into one. 
Um, but a brilliant thing that I think it was um, Brian Mosier said it to me as well, because he always tests two things that I say. He says, he asks me um, about a place in Newfoundland, because there's a place, if you wrote it down, we'd probably pronounce it as Porto Basque, but apparently it's Porto Basque. So that's for you, Brian. Uh, and then you also have to remember to say, understand Newfoundland. So it sounds like understand Newfoundland. Um, but yeah, with the Irish tones, the American Canadian tones, you've got a whole plethora of sounds that are kind of merged into one. Um, but it was really fun when I did get it right and we had the lovely Joel of our dialect coach to tell us every time we got it wrong. <laughs> it did not come naturally to me at all, actually, um, or anyone, I don't think. It's a really, really tricky accent. Um, we had an incredible accent coach called Joel, who was amazing, who was with us in rehearsals. Um, and he gave us sessions on the accent, made sure we were on the right path. But to our ear, it sounded very Irish. So uh, we had to start from a North American base and then layer the accent on and work from there. It's very tricky and there's no way I could have done it on my own. There's an amazing guy called Joel Golds, who is the accent guru for the whole show all around the world. And Joel lives in Los Angeles. In January, he came over to London to teach us the accent for a few days. And then he went away and we kept having Skype sessions with him. And he's an absolute dictator on every word, every syllable. And eventually, once we opened the show, they would record the whole show, send him the tapes, and he would send you a script marked up with every point you went wrong. And slowly, you eliminate those mistakes until eventually, hopefully, you're speaking in a really authentic accent. We miss seeing you all and performing for you every night, but know that we'll be back soon. Lots of love. And you don't even know it.